There are stories from December of 1965, a few weeks before Christmas, of something incredibly strange happening in the Catoctin Mountain of Western Maryland. Several sightings of a wolf-like creature walking on two legs were reported on the mountain. But until today, those sightings that happened in 1965 have not been explained. Today, we're going to be going on the trail of the Dawayo. So just for fun, JT and I went up into the Catoctin Mountain to see what we could find for ourselves about what happened in those years. This is Western Maryland. This is Frederick County. This is Washington County. We're going to start right there around Middletown. That's where it was first seen in 1944, but it was also seen again sighted in 1965. We were intrigued by a story from the blog Phantoms and Monsters. It uh, recounted an experience that a man had when he was a young boy, 10 or 11 years old. It happened in the Middletown Valley, which is between the Catoctin Mountain and South Mountain. And he had been visiting his grandmother's house, which at the time did not have an indoor bathroom. And this is the story he told. I made it down to the outhouse and don't even remember hearing the usual night noises like crickets or owls. It seemed almost too quiet. I felt an uncanny sensation of being watched, and I started to get scared. I left the outhouse, peeked outside first, and for some reason I wanted to run back to the house, getting to safety as quickly as possible. It was a rough and long run, and I tired quickly and began walking the last few hundred feet to the porch of the house. Something told me to look back where I had been, and to this day I wish I hadn't. What I saw was an impossible sight. The animal stepping through the backyard of Grandma's property, just past the garden, about 10 feet past the outhouse. It was this upright furry creature with a dog wolf head. I stopped dead in my tracks, not believing my eyes because it was impossible. It had arms that had claw-like hands that hung out in front of it. As it turned its head and looked right at me, the eyes looked yellow and super reflective. Chill sh shot up my spine as it quickly walked on two legs that looked like real dog legs bending backwards, traveling from left to right past her garden into the old gravel lane. Did the creature know the boy was there? Did it come after him intentionally like a hunter? We don't know. The house was located on Shank Road outside of Middletown. We drove there, but it's impossible to tell which house the boy was visiting when he saw the creature. This valley is in the eastern part of the Appalachian Mountains and only a few miles from the Appalachian Trail. Today, Shank Road looks like a peaceful part of the valley with nothing remarkable beyond its isolation. The story we're gonna tell you might seem fake, but the people involved thought it was real. It's backed up by articles in the Frederick News, News Post, a local newspaper, and we dug up these uh, uh, articles in the archives, which are located in the um, local library in Frederick, Maryland. Now, this creature described by the boy was seen several times over. It was named the Dueyo by one of the first people to see it, and it took on that name by the locals. Uh, then we're gonna cross, go across here to Gambrill State Park outside of Frederick. So if they seen it in two different spots, where do you think the, the trail would be? The next spot that it was sighted was here, outside of Cunningham Falls State Park, and that was sighted by both hunters and by like forest rangers. And then uh, right across here, Catoctin Mountain State Park, we're gonna go there. We're gonna go there. If, there's, if it's anywhere, it seems to have been moving north. So we're gonna start here and move north along with it. Okay. Along the way, we're gonna talk to some people uh -huh. and see if they know anything about it. Are we talking about real people? People who are in the area. Okay. We're gonna cross South Mountain and we're gonna go into um, the Middletown Valley. You can see the sign here that we're heading towards Middletown, seven miles away. The legend has been around for a couple hundred years among the Pennsylvania Dutch in the region. They called it the Hexen Wolf. From the picture I'm looking at, it looks like a fox and like a squirrel and like two, three different animals mixed together, like a, a fox, a squirrel, and like a wolf. Here we are in Middletown. 
we're gonna see if we can uh, stop and talk to somebody. We've talked to a couple people and they've said that they've never seen it and they said they don't want to talk to us about it so I really don't know why. Maybe it was frightening, mysterious, but I don't really know. It was next seen uh, outside of Gambrel State Park, so we're going to go over there. Actual reports that we could track uh, started in November of 1965, and they were written by a reporter for the Frederick News Post or the Frederick Post named George May. This is the story that he tells. Near the Gambrel State Park, a man by the name of John Becker went out to investigate a strange noise near his home. It was almost dark when he saw a creature moving towards him. He explained how he fought the creature. It was as big as a bear, had long black hair and growled like a wolf or a dog in anger. He fought the animal until it fled into the woods and that his wife and children saw the incident. But that was only the beginning. Soon after that story appeared, more sightings were, were reported in the region and people were becoming alarmed. That mountain over there is the Catoctin Mountain. That's where people think that the Dueyo has been living. That's a pretty big mountain, so you really don't know where if the Dueyo is like coming back and forth, it could be hiding anywhere in the mountains. What if we actually see it? Well, then I would say we want to back up slowly. We definitely don't want to be running. We're somewhere on this trail, so we're gonna just try to go up and like see if we can see something. We talked to someone and they said that they've never heard of it. And there was like a park ranger. There's bears in here. So if we see a bear, you know, I'm not gonna run. I can just walk back slowly. There's a fork in the road. The only way it's pointing was that way. If we're gonna see a dueyo, it's probably gonna be in the narrower path. Here's from an article on December 1st. Since the first story about the dueyo appeared in Monday's paper, the rangy black beast has been sighted by a hunter. Residents in the area have become alarmed. Is it really true, a man asked on the telephone. I'm concerned, thinking this monster could be roaming around loose in Frederick County, he added. This is um, part of Catoctin Mountain. The Dueyo was seen on this mountain in 1965, but we don't see anything right now. No. Let's go back. There was a lot more to come with more details and descriptions. Now the Catoctin Mountain in Western Maryland is actually the easternmost uh, ridge of the Blue Ridge Mountains. South Mountain is best known as the location for the Blair Witch Project, and we did a video about that. Although in that movie, um, it's called the Black Hills, not South Mountain, but actually it's South Mountain. Next, we're gonna go up to Cunningham Falls State Park. It was seen at Cunningham Falls in 1975. It says, uh, according to the report here, that two men were on Catoctin Mountain. A large animal ran across the road in front of them and they saw it in their headlights. Their description matched the general description of the Dueyo. If we encounter it, then I'm running for my life. This Dueyo was soon compared to another mythical beast from the area called the Snallagaster. According to Webster's Third New International Dictionary, it's a mythical nocturnal creature, half bird and half reptile, chiefly reported in rural Maryland, which preys on children and poultry. It was so bad at one time, according to the Frederick Post, that children were never seen on the streets when it began to get dark, and many adults themselves refused to leave their homes at night. This area probably has a lot of bears. Because we've seen two bear sculptures. Maybe the Dueyo is uh, some kind of deformed bear. Look, the road is getting even narrower now. It's almost a gravel road. Here we are at Cunningham Falls State Park, and this has water. We figure that um, if the Dueyo is in these mountains, it's gonna need water at some point, and so this would be a good place to get it. In the fall of 1976, another sighting was happened um, on Route 77 near Thurmont. There they saw a large creature run across the road in front of their car. And this is a quote. At least six feet tall, but inclined forward since it was moving quickly. 
Its head was fairly large and similar to the profile of a wolf. The body was covered in brown or brindle colored fur, but the lower half had a striped pattern of noticeably darker and lighter banding. The forelegs were slimmer and held out in front as it moved. The back legs were very muscled and thick, similar perhaps to that of a kangaroo. We're now going to cross Route 77. We're going to go to Catoctin Mountain State Park. The one thing about Catoctin Mountain State Park is that it's right next to Camp David, where the president sometimes vacations. And uh, we want to make sure that we don't have a run in with the Secret Service. We're heading towards one of the vistas to see if we can uh, spot anything. So right now we're going up towards Thurmont Vista where hopefully we can get a better view of the land. Over this way is Camp David. Some of that is blocked. These are the signs they put up when we're getting too close to Camp David. Are we too close to Camp David? You are now, you're on the wrong side of the sign. These sightings in Maryland fall into what is known as the dogman or wolfman phenomenon. These are creatures that hunters and hikers describe as running into in woods, in forests, in state parks throughout much of America. Was something really prowling in the Catoctin Hills outside of Frederick in 1965? Or was the city just caught up in hysteria? It's hard to say. I mean, I wish we would have found it because we walked up trails a lot of times. We walked and we had to walk up this big trail for nothing. I don't think we'll ever really know if these stories of the Dway are true, but I think that uh, going out there and exploring was a good idea, seeing if we could find any evidence of it. It's super quiet. Maybe this video will help other hunters who know more about dogmen and these types of creatures um, try to identify what really happened in those two months of uh, 1965, right before Christmas.